Hello everybody. One more lecture in our cycle devoted to the Russian native breeds. The topic of the day is the South Russian Shepherd Dog, which you can see uh, on your screen. This is the dog in the full coat condition. But not many of you can suppose what, what is hidden inside. And you can take a look and uh, find out. So, but before to tell you about the, this breed, as usually, uh, I will tell you about the uh, model approach in the application to the dog confirmation and movement, which will help me uh, to tell you with a deeper understanding of the standard provisions. This approach includes two models, biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs. The first one is devoted to the soundness, as well as the second one to the harmony of the dog confirmation. Uh, these models are resulted what long years research is done during 24 years from 1963 to 1987 and based on the specifics of the Soviet breeding strategy. According to this strategy, the only breeding commission of each breed club was in charge of breeding plan a year. And uh, since 1963, during almost 30 years, I had been chairman of that commission, first in the Doberman Club and later on in the Schnauzer Club. In some periods, this uh, plan included per year about three to 400 brood bitches. So you can imagine uh, how great was statistics we have operated at the time. So all hypotheses appeared during breeding process were checked for the trustfulness. Uh, about biomechanical model, I have to say, that this is the integrity of postulates and harmonic model of the dogs is integrity of the harmonics, harmonious proportions. Later on, I have defended the doctoral dissertation in biology named the dog confirmation improvement through biomechanical model of the dog. So the previous hypothesis became afterwards status of the scientifically proven facts. Therefore, you can fully trust them and use in your practice. Both models are of practical value. Judges can find here universal reference points which help them to increase the objectivity of their assessment. And uh, breeders can find the, the selective algorithm for the acceleration of the breeding progress. This is the preface. Now, let me start with the biomechanical model. Exceptions where this model is working, is functioning uh, not in full volume. And the South Russian Shepherd Dog is the example of that. So, for all breeds belonging to the majority, I'm very sorry, sorry. I don't know, my lecture. I can't say now. I can't. I have a lecture, I can't. Sorry. For the majority of the breeds, the spinal proportions of the top line are divided by the, by the anatomical divisions according to the ratio, two, one, one, where two units fall on the thoracic part of the spine or actual back, one unit falls on the lumbar part or loin, 
And the last one unit falls on the sacrum, which is a upper part of the group. This postulate is valid for the South Russian shepherd dog. The second postulate is uh, this one. Uh, angle by the axis of the pendulum created by two lines where the first one is along the median line of shoulder blade and the second one co connects the hip and iliac tuber. And at this point of intersection, uh, there is the angle 90 degrees. I used the term pendulum, and uh, this is quite conditionally. It is more convenient for me, for me uh, to call this construction pendulum. Uh, just for um, easier explanation. So, one more time. <coughs> Angle by the axis of the pendulum is 90 degrees. Third postulate is the principle of two horizontals. For the majority of the breeds, the humerus scapula joint and the hip joint are placed on one horizontal line. This is the red one. Don't believe your eyes. I will explain a little bit later on. And the second horizontal line connects elbow joint and knee joint. In case of South Russian Shepherd Dog, the upper so-called horizontal line or line connecting humeral scapula and hip is not horizontal and this uh, difference is about five degrees. Later on it will be explained. The next postulate is the principle of two verticals. Look at these blue vertical lines, first one and the second one. The first one um, connects the top of with us and the elbow joint. Or with other words, I can say that the elbow joint is located under the top of the shoulder blade. Uh, the second one connects the tail of se uh, set of tail and the knee joint. Or, with other words, I can say that the knee is located under the tail set. Катюша, дайте мне, пожалуйста, другие картинки. А то здесь слишком много их набегает. И внимание России. So, one more time, this is a principle of two horizontals which is violated in case of South Russian sheep dog because of the upper line connecting humerus scapula and hip. Uh, but uh, the lower line remains horizontal. Следующая картинка, пожалуйста. This is the principle of two vertical lines. Elbow is located under the top of the withers and knee joint is located under the tail set. And uh, at this picture you can see the two horizontal lines I will use later on when giving the uh, comments to this postulate. This um, picture belongs to the previous postulate.
Uh, this postulates, postulate is about the length of the body and the distance between front and the rear legs. Uh, the uh, length of the body to be measured from the sternum. This is the sternum point. So this is the projection, which is the same uh, to the end of buttocks. And uh, about the uh, limbs, four legs should be moved uh, under the body, should be placed under the body. And the rear uh, leg should be placed behind to the vertical rear pastern. And uh, according to this postulate, these distances, length of the body, and the distance between front and rear legs are equal. Uh, according to this postulate, the vertical lower from the point of intersection uh, is uh, uh, the line where the center of gravity is located. And here you can see dog on the move. Uh, what you can see in the real life and uh, what is inside concerning front assembly and uh, the rear one. Uh, now I will give um, very briefly some comments to this postulate. So about first postulate named two one one. Uh, could you please keep in your mind this ratio, which is very import important, and this importance or value to be explained further on in the framework of the harmonic model of the dogs. According to this ratio, the main sense, sense is that the back or actual back, namely thoracic part of the spine, is the longest part of the spine. This is its half, as well as loin and sacrum are equal in the length and are short. Regard, uh, regarding the actual back. Two times less than the back. And this is also two, time, two times less as the back. Uh, what does it mean? That means that the actual back uh, is the uh, part of the rib cage, its upper part. And uh, the length of this uh, upper part, the length of the thoracic part of the spine, or length of the actual back, defines length of the rib cage. Uh, and this is important because rib cage uh, should be roomy. It is the uh, it's required to be roomy because of the better development of the heart, lung, and general blood vessels. In framework of researches, in my researches, it was proven that the length of the chest leads to the depth of the chest. That's why two dimensions are on maximum. If 
length of the upper part of the rib cage is on maximum. We don't require maximum of the uh, breadth of the chest. Uh, and in case of the South Russian sheepdog, it can be explained uh, on the very special way, so I prefer to give this explanation later on. So, two units are important for the better development of the heart, lung, and general harmonic vessels, because in this case, these two units, I would say, provide the deep chest as possible. Short loin will provide the best transmission from the rear to the front. And a um, short loin, when transmitting the motive thrust from the rear, is oscillating and its amplitude is not so big. So, the oscillation of the last part of the back, where back is not supported by the rib cage, you remember, last four vertebra uh, and uh, last four false ribs. <coughs> Not a big amplitude of short loin leads to not a big amplitude amplitude of the last part of the back. That's why uh, violation of this part is not so big. If we suppose that the loin is longer, that means that the oscillation of the loin will have a bigger amplitude. And uh, back, especially its last part, will be involved in this process of the oscillation with a bigger amplitude. So, uh, this os oscillation with a big amplitude, with a age and loading will destroy this part of the back. That's why short loin is the, the creates the preconditions of the strong back. And vice versa, long loin will lead to the back, which will be becoming soft with the age and uh, loading. What else? This ratio can provide for the whole construction very um, important complex of the positive features. As I told you, strong back, deep chest, and in the first approximation, correct angulations in front and in the rear, as well as the correct format. What is format? This is the ratio between length of the body and height at width. This is a special zootechnical term we use in our Russian sinological practice. So, something else. Short loin means 
that the dog is compact. Please pay attention to this statement. Because compactness is not square body. As many people think, compactness is provided by the short loin. Because there is the distance between front, including head and neck, and of course rib cage, and the last part of the body, hind quarter. Short coupled, compact, or dog with a short loin is the same. So you can see. Uh, the whole complex of, of very positive features which help us uh, to uh, create sound construction. Pendulum and 90 degrees by the axis. Uh, this postulate creates preconditions for the balanced movement. Uh, because in this case, the dog can have equal front and rear strides. You can see distance between the front and the rear legs are equal. This is the first thing. Another thing. That means that the slant of the shoulder blade, as well as the slant of the pelvis, they are not independent. And their dependence is based on the 90 degrees by the point of intersection of these lines. As I told you before, for the majority of the breeds, humerus scapula and uh, hip lie on one horizontal line. Not like this. And the uh, elbow joint and uh, knee joint lie on another horizontal line. If it is provided, then we can say that uh, uh, Overbuilt construction of this dog will be blocked because both lines, this one, this, not green, this, and this green, are oscillating contrary. And uh, they compensate their mutual oscillation, so this violation are not transmitted to the top line which remains the same when in standing. In case of South Russian dog, South Russian shepherd dog, this is different and you can see that the hip is higher than the shoulder joint or humeral scapula. And you will see immediately how high is rump. Uh, rump or sacrum, particularly um, iliac tuber, uh, is located at the same level as the withers or even higher. And it will be explained later on. Now I only draw your attention to this point. Try to remember that in case of South Russian Shepherd, this postulate is working only partially. This line is horizontal and this line is slightly oblique. Now, some more explanation. 
why in the case of this location, special location of the hip, uh, doc, doc's rump is higher than the width. Either when standing or when moving. Uh, so, this line remains horizontal and this line is uh, inclined from the horizontal position. Why? Let us uh, understand that these lines are oscillating contrary when dog is moving. So, this joint will go up more than the stifle which will go down. So, and uh, it was based on the initial position of this green line which is inclined from the horizontal position. And this leads to the overbuilt construction, which we can see immediately when looking on the dock when moving. Uh, about these two vertical lines, uh, let us uh, look at the location of these joints. They are located exactly under the withers and exactly under the tail set. That's why they create special mobile support of the spine at it, its ends, here and here. That's why uh, all disturbances uh, arising from the jumping and uh, falling will be softened when transmitted to the spinal column. Следующую картинку дайте мне, пожалуйста, которая относится к этому. This is illustration of the idea I told you about. This and that you can see immediately illustration of the principle I told you. Uh, another conclusion this principle of two verticals uh, is um, in charge of the optimal meaning uh, of the front and uh, rear angulations. I mean humerus scapula and coxofemoral. Of course, it is well known that the best angle in principle is 90 degrees x uh, um, angle but in reality we can have here 110 max minimum 100 uh, degrees which nevertheless is quite close to the right angle and it could be provided by the elbow placed more backwards. So in this case, the upper arm is becoming more uh, oblique, which leads to the uh, front angulation um, approaching to the right angle. And the right angle is the very special one because uh, of the best economical movement. Minimum work will be 
executed if this angle is 90 degrees or close to it. And in this case, we can see the same if we look at the angle between the upper thigh and uh, sciatic bone is also close to 90 degrees. In this case, I have to add something else. Uh, sciatic bone should be rather long because here are located extensors which are in charge of the power of the motive thrust. And when this construction is built according to the right angle, uh, the dog will work with the minimum efforts and length of the of this bone of the sciatic bone uh, will create preconditions for the better development of the unbending muscles or extensor. Uh, it is not um, painted here another uh, rear leg when um, th this uh, opposite hind leg is um, placed under the body. In that case, another upper thigh will create a right angle with the iliac bones where uh, flexors are located, muscles in charge <coughs> of the bending. So you can see here are two very positive effects, two positive um, results. Optimization of the angulation front and rear and the special mobile support of the spine along its whole length from the first thoracic vertebra to the tail set. As I told you, length of the body and distance between front and rear legs placed correctly according to the zootechnical requirement uh, these distances are equal. A short explanation. Uh, for the beginning, let us suppose that the limbs of the dog, either front and uh, rear or rear, uh, are deprived of any angulations. They look like the legs of the chair without any angulations. In this case, distance between these legs and the length of the body will be absolutely equal. Now, let us imagine that the dog's body is moved forward regarding this front and the rear limbs with the correct angulations as well. In this case, dog's body should be moved either from front or from rear on the same distance. Otherwise, that, the, that strides, front and the rear strides, will be not equal. But equality of the front and rear strides are base of the balance when dog is moving. So it's easy. The body is moved regarding the front and rear legs on the same distance. Otherwise, uh, balance on the move will be destroyed due to unequal front and uh, rear strides. Now, uh, about the dog on the move. Uh, first of all, 
let me remind you that the, these blue lines create preconditions for the equality of the front and the rest rise. You can see it here. Then, next, the criterion is this one, according to which the swing of the lamps or span on the legs uh, is inscribed in this triangle or in this angle. When dog is trotting close to the ground, close to be landed. Here, at this vertical line, as I told you, the center of gravity is located. And the limbs from the opposite side are converging to the base of this vertical line. Why? It's uh, easy to explain if I use very um, common uh, example. Try to imagine that you are in the bus and you are looking for the place where uh, wobbling will be minimum. Where have you to stay? Where have you to stand? Of course, in the center of gravity. And here is the same. Here is the central gravity location. This is the base of this vertical line. And uh, the hind leg uh, with this construction will provide support of the body when landing, uh, which uh, with the minimum wobbling. And uh, one more criterion. Here is the eye. And here is the paw of the front leg at the moment of landing or close to it. And these two points, eye and this point on the paw, lie on one vertical line. Uh, simple explanation. A little bit behind uh, the eye, in the ear, is located vestibular apparatus, which is in charge of the equilibrium. And the equilibrium will be reached because of this vertical line a little bit in advance of the landing. And finally, I come back to these green lines, where the upper green line is not horizontal. That's why the transmission of the motive thrust from the rear uh, to the iliac tuber leads uh, to the situation when ramp is becoming high. Higher than the width in case of the South Russian ship dock. This dock is slightly overbuilt, and this is typical for the South Russian Shepherd. As I promised, uh, the judges could, could find here the reference points which help them to increase their objectivity when judging. So, even the dog I would say is hidden under this profuse coat. With the hands, you can 
examined the top line. And to find the middle is not a problem here, as well as the rest of the uh, spine uh, should be ideally divided in the middle. So, anytime judging the dog and uh, touching its top line, you can find the real proportions and it will give you the objective result according to which you will describe the top line. Not only bec because of this curve, but also because of the proportions. Moreover, you can see immediately if the elbow is under the with us and the knee is under the tail set. And uh, you can see as well how is located the lower line connecting elbow and knee. The same could be found when you are looking at the location of the humerus scapula and hip, which should be a bit higher than humerus scapula. So, your visual impressions, which uh, um, could be Uh, which could be, um, how should I say, the best. Your visual impressions, when you are looking of this very special constructed dog, uh, coated with a profuse coat, will be not objective without your examinations, as I told you. This is the positive uh, conclusion uh, and uh, you can use it in your practical work. Every time telling about each uh, our native breed, I use this approach. At the moment, biomechanical, next one will be harmonic. Uh, to demonstrate you that you can use it in your practical work very efficiently, first and the second, this approach is universal. And even the dog does not belong to the majority of the breeds where the biomechanical model is fully valid. In this, this case, when one of the postulate is uh, violated, slightly but nevertheless violated. You can use it and understand the, what is happening. Okay, now let me say to you the next uh, one idea before we will read the standard, analyze it and give the comments. From the nature, humans are able to find out harmony in everything and of course in the dogs as well. They are able to differ. Uh, well proportioned dog from ugly dog without any knowledge they don't know anything about the harmony moreover they don't know anything about the principle or laws of harmony and uh, nevertheless they are able to uh, evaluate these dogs why and how uh, the human eyes, like human ears, are in tune with the golden section 
uh, which is the universal principle of form building, form building principle of harmony. Universal form building principle of harmony. And this is a principle uh, given to the human from above, from the God. Now, uh, please let me tell you something about the golden section that we can uh, use it for the harmonical model of the dogs and uh, then we can talk on the same language all together. Golden section, golden section as the principle, as the universal form building principle of harmony was uh, well known uh, already in the ancient times. In ancient Egypt, in ancient Greece, and uh, of course in the Renaissance time, uh, it's enough to remember pyramid, pyramids, it's enough to remember Parthenon or some famous names like Phidius, which used, which was a famous, very famous sculptor and architect and used in his work the golden section to reach uh, perfection. Uh, it was well known for the mathematicians. Uh, for example, Euclid, who lived three centuries before Christ, gave the definition to this principle as follows. He named this um, principle, principle of the division of the segment in the extreme and mean ratio. What does it mean? Segment O1 is divided by point X by this extreme and mean ratio if the whole segment length one is uh, to its biggest part X is the same as the biggest part X is to the smallest one, one minus x. Here is it. This proportion could be easily modified, uh, transformed to the square equation. Which positive root you can see in front of you? Square root from five minus one, all should be divided to two. And if we will calculate this number, third approximation will be like this. More rough approximation will be this one. And the most rough approximation will be this one. 0 0.6 or 3 to 5. I highlighted that in red because this number we will use when saying that uh, golden section is reached. Why? Because when we are measuring the dogs, we are doing mistakes of the measurement. And these mistakes exceeds, I would say, the tail which we neglected. So three to five will be enough. Uh, the name of this principle as the golden section was given by Leonardo da Vinci and it was a special story because Leonardo da Vinci was the only illustrator of the book written by another scientist Luca Pacioli who was monk and mathematician as well. 
And uh, according to Luca Pacioli, this principle had another name. It was named La Proporzia Divina, Divine Proportion, Proportion given by God. As I told you before, remembering the human eye and human ear, which are in tune with the golden section, in tune, which was done from above, done from God. Something else, which is important for our researches and our explanations. Four centuries before Leonardo da Vinci and Luca Pacioli, who lived in 16th century, in 12th centuries, century, lived another mathematician, whose name was Leonardo Fibonacci, from Pisa. He was solving the problem quite far away from our topic, and the result of his uh, solution was this consequence which became worldwide. Very simple consequence, sequence, which was built so easily. One, one, two. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight, and on. <coughs> Uh, next sequence is the modification of the first one. Look, this is the same one. Then we divide each previous to the next one member of the sequence. One, one second, two third, three fifth, five eighth, eight thirteenth, and on. And uh, this sequence limit is this number. And you can see immediately the same number, either here or here. So that means that each number, each member of this sequence is approximation of the limit. Uh, the more we are uh, living from the end, the close to this number we are approaching. And you can see here the same number we noticed here. But coming back to the initial sequence, may I draw your attention to the first three initial numbers, three initial members of this Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two. Do they remind you anything? I believe yes. If you read it in the reverse way, two, one, one. This is three numbers which define the correct proportions of the top line. And this is the moment of truth, I would say. Because without these three numbers, the final number, which is the golden section, could not be reached. So, this is absolutely required proportion of the top line. And its violation will lead to the disharmony. So, please, now you have the explanation 
of the principle, which was the first postulate of the biomechanical mod. Now you can understand why I put that postulate the first, not because of its order, but because of its value. I have to say, then, if the top line is divided according to this ratio, to one one, then this is the first initial tuning to the golden section. Okay, I believe it will be enough. And now uh, let me please tell you about some examples which could illustrate how powerful is this principle in our life. Uh, according to Luca Pacioli, the Proportia Divina was the universal law of harmony. And this is true. <coughs> uh, you can read a lot of examples which are illustrated this statement in my book. Um, the book name is Dog Confirmation and its Evaluation, which can be found, I believe it should be available in UK in our dogs. So please, should you are interested in the uh, detailed uh, story, please read it. Uh, many things could be uh, given as the illustration, um, but um, I prefer to tell you about some uh, only about some um, limited examples, like uh, blood pressure. Blood pressure. Normally, blood pressure is 125 to 75, and this is a 5 to 3, or 130 to 80, and this is 13 to 8. Uh, another uh, example, uh, Probably I will not tell you about many. Uh, I will uh, I will uh, only remember the egg, which Fabergé used as the symbol of the harmony, Easter egg. Uh, and uh, this egg is not only beautiful for the eye, perfectly built, but it is also it has also very special construction. Um, durability of this shape is extremely strong. It is almost impossible to destroy the egg squeezing evenly in the hand. Why? Because this shape uh, should protect the embryo which is inside. This is the example uh, illustrating very important thought. Uh, constructions built according to the golden section are not only beautiful for the eye, but also, and maybe the first, firstly, they have the optimal functions. And the uh, um, example of the egg is one of the best illustrations of this statement. So, now we are ready to go to the dog harmony. And um, I will tell you about the uh, harmonious proportions of the dog, which are required for the harmony of its conformation. The first proportion is 
depth of the chest from the elbow joint to the top of the withers to the length of the top line from the first thoracic vertebra to the tail set is golden section. Length of the chest to the length of the body is golden section. And let me please remind you how are we measuring these distances. Uh, I start measuring length of the chest and length of the body from the point of sternum, which is behind the shoulder joint or humeral scapula. Otherwise, I, I will lose part of body, which is located in front of the humeral scapula, this one. Uh, this is the point of intersection of this line with the last rib. So, it will define the length of the chest. And it will define the length of the body. Three to five. Moreover, let me remind you the first definition of the golden section is the <coughs> principle of the division of the segment in the extreme and the mean ratio. This is segment O1. This is the point X. So, the whole length to its biggest part is the same as this distance to the rest. So, it's 3 to 5. Or, it's also 3 to 5. This is the proportion number two. Следующий, пожалуйста. Length of the body to the length of the diameter is golden section. What does it mean diameter? Of course, we see the dog silhouette or dog outlines uh, projected on the vertical line parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. In real life, we are connecting the occiput and paw of the rear leg placed behind to the vertical rear pastern. And then you have to shift this point uh, in the vertical plane I told you about. Should you have any questions, please um, let me uh, suggest you to read my book. Height at elbow. Please be careful. Elbow joint, not elbow alna. Height at elbow, the sum of length of the head and neck is golden section. And here you can see the dog with this oval, two ovals. One is the girth of the muzzle, another one is the girth of the skull. And then the ratio is three to five. Small, um, simple explanation. Uh, the dog should have strong bite. Try to remember egg. Egg is built according to the golden section. Uh, I mean the cross diameter to the longitudinal diameter are according to 3 to 5. And this provides the 
highest, the strongest durability of the shape. So the most powerful bite will be provided if these girths are according to the golden section. So three to five. Uh, this is the theory, and uh, this theory uh, could be uh, given by more details, but not today, because the topic of today is the South Russian Shepherd Dog. One more time, should you are interested in more deeper explanations, because today I only mostly declare these ideas, please read my book. Now, uh, when we, we have uh, these two, two tools, I mean biomechanical model and harmonic model, we can go to the standard of the, of the South Russian Shepherd. Uh, but before to read the FCI standard, I would like to tell you something about the uh, previous story. Uh, I have uh, here the book written by my mentor, Alexander Mazover. The book was published in 1947, and one of the chapters, chapters is devoted to the South Russian Shepherd. You can see how this dog looked like. Not so much difference from the modern ones. But let me read you the standard and uh, highlight uh, the points which are the same and which are changed today regarding the previous description. So, um, I will translate you right now this text uh, written by Alexander Mazover. South Russian Shepherd Dog is the dog of the big size, strong and dry uh, type, fast uh, and uh, easy moving, fierce and mistrustful to the strangers. Head. Ch uh, skull is elongated, um, close to the skulls of wolves. Um, cheekbones and uh, occiput uh, are well developed. Stop is hardly visible. Uh, muzzle is uh, snipey, shorter than the skull. Eyes are of oval shape, directed set, dark. Uh, mm. Even the dogs are light. A nose is black. Attention, please. Gray and uh, brown. Ears of medium size, hanging, triangle, uh, low set, covered with a dense coat. Lips are tight fitting. Uh, teeth are uh, large, white, scissor bite. Neck is dry, muscled, high set. Uh, body is uh, elongated. Format is 108 to 110. Back is straight, strong, white. Croup horizontally. Uh, set. Uh, chest is uh, greatly wide, 
the flattened uh, ribs in the comparison to another breeds, but deep. Tail, uh, when resting, is uh, uh, down and uh, with a semi uh, circle. When straightened, is reaching uh, the hock. Uh, majority of the dogs have two, three last tail vertebra fused and um, uh, there is the hook at the end, hook at the end, sorry. Humeral scapula is about 100 degrees, foreleg uh, straight, long, the South Russian dog should not be short-legged and cobby. Um, bones of legs strong but not coarse. Rice is strong, wide. Uh, pastor is wide, long, a little bit uh, slanted. Rear legs are set parallel. Um, stifles are uh, somewhat uh, somewhat um, how should I say it better not too much not too much bent um, rare pastels uh, usually are a little bit um, slanted forward that's why the hawk is um, defined uh, well, well. Muscles are dry and strong. Rump is a bit higher than the withers, one to two centimeters, not more. Um, feet are oval. Uh, fingers are uh, arched. Um, dew claws sometimes could appear, but very seldom. Coat is a very special feature of the breed. Dense, shaggy, somewhat wavy, covers the whole body of the dog. Significantly uh, changing uh, its um, real uh, shape. Uh, the structure of the coat uh, is somewhat similar to the uh, coat of the merino sheep and uh, also has the plicus, especially uh, on the thighs, tail and uh, sacrum. Uh, length of the hair of the adult dog in the region of neck and thighs scythe, is about 10 to 15 centimeters, sometimes is about 30 to 35 centimeters. <coughs> Mainly uh, the color is white white with yellowish shading, um, gray ashen shading, gray with white and black. The spotted colors are not desirable. This is the old description of the South Russian Shepherd. Something should be added um, regarding the origin of this breed, but I do prefer to do it when reading the standard. Now, you 
had an idea how this dog looked like in the, the previous times. Coming to the uh, FCI standard, I start with a brief historical summary. The ancestry of the South Russian Shepherd Dog is historically thought to be from beaded coarse haired dogs which were brought together with the fine wool sheeps to step regions of South you can see how it looks. This is the model, uh, modern specimen of this breed. But anyway, you can have an idea of its shape. Uh, fine wool sheep, I mean Merino ships. This fact is mentioned in the 26th volume of complete collection of the Orion Empire laws. It was 1830, published in St. Petersburg. These agile dogs of medium size, this, looking like modern Gos Datura Catalan dogs, were able to round up the flocks of sheep and to protect them. Uh, these dogs brought from Spain spontaneously mated with a local shepherd and sight uh, hound like dogs who had been kept their sheep from ancient times. Now let me come back to the Mazover text. And uh, what was written here? A cultivated of the South Russian Shepherd uh, was uh, based on multiply crossed with the local step dogs. Uh, local side hounds, which uh, outlines you can find out in the uh, modern South Russian Shepherds. These dogs, which were, uh, which lived uh, mainly in the steppe regions, gave the South Russian uh, Shepherd bigger size. Uh, the white color became predominant, the um, type became more light and uh, typical for the signed house, a somewhat flattened rib cage, also with a tucked up belly and uh, more angulated uh, rear legs. Moreover, Mazover writes when the, uh, the time the South Shepherd dog was mm, spread in Crimea uh, and uh, North Caucasian steppes, where it was crossed with the Caucasian Shepherd and uh, the offsprings had uh, a coat shorter and not so wavy, but still with, with well-developed moustaches and beard. This is the addition to our preface. Later on, these crossbreed dogs became widespread in the southern, southern regions of Russia and even were known abroad in Western countries or Europe as the Russian Shepherd. 
1867, a golden medal was awarded to the Russian Shepherd Dog at the World's Fair in Paris for the beauty. However, the real selection began in 1898 in Crimea, in Ascania and Nova, the demand of Russian baron of a German origin, Mr. Friedrich von Falzfein. He was the person to give the breed modern typical features and to call it South Russian Shepherd. Numerous breeding with the local side hounds had left to increasing the height and dominance of the white color. It's from a Soviet text. Added some lightness of the, of the conformation and a few flattened chest typical for fast running dogs, as well as tucked up belly and more pronounced hindquarters angulations. Last typical characteristics of conformation and the name South Russian Shepherd were finally assigned to the breed in the USSR period in the early 1930s when the first official standard of the breed was approved. The South Russian Shepherd dogs are easy to keep and they can easily be adopted to various climatic conditions to the endurance uh, to the endurance and they are always ready to protect their owners and their property. These dogs are exceptionally loyal and dedicated to their owners, but at the same time one should not expect that the South Russian Shepherd dog will be friendly with the strangers. Now some real stories happened I would say in the modern time with this breed. Let me tell you. Let me tell you to give you the correct idea about the right temperament of these dogs. Uh, in the middle of 80s, my wife, who is veterinarian and judge for all breeds, was the time chief of the very big kennel placed uh, in the meat packing plant named Mikops. They have bred and used for uh, guarding purposes the South Russian shepherds and the Caucasian sheepdogs. That time they started to prepare these dogs for their shows. Even these dogs were used uh, to be guardian dogs. Um, they were prepared, uh, prepared for the World Dog Show in Brno, 1990. And two dogs, male and female, uh, were shipped to Czechoslovakia. Uh, they were transported uh, by train and when they were uh, standing in the ring waiting for the judging very famous Italian judge of the time Mario Piricone came uh, to each one to examine them people around the ring were very worried because they knew that the South Russian do not accept the strangers. But dogs were prepared. Every day during the long period while in Moscow, they were trained for that. <coughs> they were standing like statues and both became world winners. Seven years later on, in Basel, in Switzerland, during the World Scientific Sinological Congress, uh, was held um, the first champion of champions. And uh, we sent from Russia, South Russian shepherd dog, male one. His name was Vizir. 
Can you imagine that this dog won the group? He was a group winner. Dog was bred in Mikom's kennel. And in the evening, uh, at the gala dinner, the winners of the group, with the, the handlers, were invited uh, to take a part of this event. Vizir was uh, with the, his handler, sitting uh, close to me and Karla Reisinger, and uh, suddenly one Japanese judge came and asked, may I touch him? The dogs was touching during 10 minutes. I do not exaggerate. All people turned their head to this situation. Dogs, dog was very patient. Nothing happened. And this is about the behavior, about the temperament of the dog. Even the same dog usually is working as the uh, guard dog. Now, another example. You can see short video. It was recorded at the show, at the big show. The same Irina Kaznacheva, she was in Basel, demonstrates right behavior of the dog. You can see how obedient in the dog, despite public around. Should I give any comments? He deserved. One more time. Very impressive, isn't it? Thank you. Uh, so, now let us uh, read the standard. Um, so, please look at this dog uh, from outside. And look at this dog from inside. Profuse coat uh, completely ch is changed the outlines of the dog. Especially 
regarding the vertical proportions. Dog is rather leggy, and it looks here rather short-legged. Now, let us read the standard and uh, uh, understand step by, by step all its provisions. The South, South Russian Shepherd Dog is the dog of an above medium to a large size, moderately long body. Moderately long body. Length of the body and height at widths. Not stocky. It looks stocky, but this is not true and should be checked by hands. With the strong bones and dry, powerful muscles. The sexual dimorphism is well defined. The males are more massive compared to the females and have larger heads. The top line is the characteristic feature of the breed. It forms a slight curve of the loin. The body, head, limbs, and tail are covered with a coarse, long, thick, and shaggy coat, which creates a deceptive impression of the climbsness and heaviness. But in fact, is it not so? Because the South Russian Shepherd Dog is a quick and agile dog. Important proportions. The length of the body exceeds by 10 to 12 degrees, uh, percents, the height at uh, with us. Females are slightly, slightly longer than males. Look at the beach, please. This is a young beach, so the coat is not so profuse as it will be in the future, but nevertheless, um, you can see the old construction, and uh, please pay an attention to the, um, the prop longitudinal and vertical proportions. This is the male. He is definitely shorter in the body uh, in the comparison with the beach. Okay. Возвращаемся к рисунку со скелетом. Uh, the length of the head is approximately 40% of the height at the widths. It's quite typical proportions, not, nothing special. Okay, about 40% in the comparison with the height at widths. Uh, a ratio between the length of the muzzle Uh, and the length of the skull is approximately 5 to 6. The height at elbows is slightly exceeds half of the height at the widths. Now, please uh, be careful. I would like to draw your attention. Look at this, please. Breastbone reaches the ulna of elbow. This is the ulna, and this is the elbow joint. This length is slightly exceeds the depth of the body. And at this level, at the level of the joint, these distances are equal. So, the elbow joint is located in the middle of the distance from the withers to the ground. Please be very careful. Usually, they measure height at elbows at the level of ulna. But joint is working, not ulna. That's why I compare this height and this depth. Behavior and temperament. 
well balanced, self confident, and independent. The South Russian Shepherd is devoted to its owner, but mistrustful and aloof towards the strangers. The South Russian Shepherd dog is perfectly guard dog both when watching the cattle and when protecting the owner and his property. The head is elongated, wedge-shaped, narrowing towards the nose. So you can see two heads, profile and in front. Elongated, wedge-shaped, narrowing towards the nose. Cranial region, skull moderately broad with flat forehead. The occiput and cheekbones are well developed. They are covered by the coat, so you have to check it by your hands. Um, forehead and nasal bridge viewed from profile are parallel. Forehead and nasal bridge. Uh, the superciliar arches are slightly pronounced. We cannot see them, they are also covered. Um, stop, slightly defined. You can see depth of the stop is very small. Facial region, muzzle slightly shorter than the skull. well filled under the eyes and slightly tapering toward the nose. The nasal bridge is straight. Nose, black and uh, large. A seasonal lightening of the nose, pigmentation in dogs of Witten or Biscuit and pale ivory colors is permitted, but nevertheless, the rim of the nose shall remain black. And now remember the old description given by Mazover, where gray and brown colored nose was allowed, not anymore. Lips, dry, tightly fitting and black. Uh, jaws, teeth. The jaws are strong and powerful, scissor bite. The teeth are large, white, and placed close to each other, complete according to the dental formula. 42 teeth, double PM1 are permissible. The incisors, uh, as they base, are set in one line. It's overshaded by the tongue. Uh, the dogs with the broken incisors in case of the bite may still be determined to be considered not a fault. They are working dogs. Eyes. Almost shaped, not large, looking forward and wide apart. The color varies from dark to light brown. The darker eyes are preferred. The eyelids are dry, close fitting, pigmented. One more time about the pigmentation. In this breed, every time, always, we have to check the eyelids, if they are fully pigmented. This uh, demand and uh, requirement uh, concerning the uh, eyes color and uh, black nose and lips are especially important in this breed uh, because of the temperament. 
I have already told you in the previous lectures that at a certain stage of the embryogenesis, uh, nervous and pigment cells are located in the same embryonic membranes. That's why the selection uh, directed to the uh, best pigmentation is uh, uh, not direct selection, but still selection as a strong nervous system. Uh, practically, uh, the dogs with the yellow eyes, with the nose not of black color, dogs with not fully pigmented eye rims should be penalized depending on the uh, measure of this uh, demerits. So please remember, very important is to order in this breed black nose, black um, lips, black eye rims and the dark eyes, which creates the preconditions for the strong nervous system and good temperament. The seasonal lightening uh, um, permitted uh, for the dogs of light color is uh, quite typical, but anytime the rims of the uh, nose leather should be in black, and this is the requirement. Uh, yes, low set, medium sized, triangular, hanging close to the cheeks, covered with the thick hair. Neck, dry muscular of the medium length, set an approximately 40 degrees angle to the horizon, oval shaped in the cross section. Uh, length of the head and length of the neck approximately should be equal. Then we can say that the neck is moderately long, medium of length, of medium length. Uh, body. The top line forms a slight arch of the loin where the highest point of the top line is, like in case of Borzoi. Now you can see the influence of Borzoi. Initial breed was the shepherd, and cross with the Borzoi is still visible, and uh, typical for this breed. Don't forget that sometimes in the past they were crossed with the Caucasian sheep dogs. So many other uh, domestic dogs took a part in the creation of the modern South Russian Shepherd. But finally, we have to have this picture. It is not easy, because this dog combines feature of the Shepherd and of Borzoi. Let me explain you. Borzoi, I use this term instead of the uh, side hound uh, term, because in Russia we have Borzoi regarding all signed sight hounds, and the Borzoi in the Western uh, uh, definition is the Ruska Psovoya Borzoi. The word Psovoya is impossible to translate, but anyway, all sight hounds in Russia uh, have name Borzoi. Uh, with us, hardly visible, so not marked. 
please keep it in your mind. I will come back to this point. Back, moderately broad and long. It's a half of the top line. Uh, loin, medium length, moderately broad, muscular, slightly arched, and uh, flexible. Why it described uh, with the term moderately long? Let us analyze this uh, definition. The top line of the South Russian ship is rather long as the whole, because instead of the straight line, this line is curved. Concave and convex. And of course, this line is longer than the straight one. So, with a straight line, it will look shorter regarding the whole length. And in this case, everything is lengthened and the loin is also lengthened, but not too much. But to provide correct ratio in the comparison with the back two, one, and this should be also one. Another feature of the loin, moderately broad. Uh, let me remind you that the transversal uh, processes uh, in the dogs, unlike, unlike the horses, are not too wide. They are rather narrow. And to provide uh, good width of this region, loin should be very well muscled. And this is required because it provides uh, best, uh, because it uh, withstand wobbling of the crew. The narrow is the loin, the more wobbling is the croup. And uh, this is a bed for the movement of the dog. For, for the translational movement of the dog. So, it's clear, I believe. Slightly arched and flexible. Group, moderately long and uh, wide. One more type, uh, one more time. I told you that the sacrum or upper part of the group is short because it should be one quarter of the top line, the whole top line. And the group should be rather long. And it is provided by the development of sciatic bones, which are in charge of the final length of the group. So it's the whole group. It is its upper part, and one doesn't con contradict uh, another. These requirements of the short sacrum and a rather long croup are not contradictive. Uh, moderately broad and rather deep depth. Uh, this is in the standard, this is the, sorry, in the standard this is the technical mistake. Because after croup, it should be section uh, chest, and this is missing. So everything I will read you now is concerning the chest. Sorry. Moderately broad and rather deep chest. Uh, 
rather deep chest. Why rather deep? On one hand, it reaches the elbow. And uh, it seems to be that uh, chest is deep. On other hand, standard describes this depth as the rather deep chest. Why is this? My explanation. Depth of the chest is increasing in case when the withers are developed. The withers here in South Russian are not marked, not developed. They can cannot increase the depth of the chest in the comparison of the height at elbow. That's why visually it looks that the dog is not so deep in body. Depth of the body, when you are examining by your hands, is uh, quite okay, but no, not more. In this case, you cannot see this proportion, and especially in the dogs, when the coat covers the whole body and uh, its length is uh, very big. They are profusely coated dog. There is profusely coated dog here on the picture. And this is the reality. So one more time. Depth of the chest looks not so big like in, uh, in the comparison with the other breeds because of the withers which are not pronounced, which are not developed, not marked, and which cannot add the depth of the chest. This is on one hand. On the other hand, the top line is lengthened because of its shape, which is a curved. And it is longer than in case when the top line is shorter, when it's straight, then this ratio, depth of the chest and length of the straight top line is different. And here we have to compare this depth of the chest with a, this long top line. This is the another explanation of our um, visual uh, perceive. Uh, the four chest, the ribs are slightly flattened. I told you before, this is the influence of side hound, of the step side hound uh, in the very past. Uh, the fore chest is slightly is placed slightly forward beyond the scapular humeral joint. Here, here, this is the humeral scapula, and this is the sternum. Underline it extends at the level of the elbow. Level of the elbow ulna, not joint. Alna. And the belly has a moderate tuck up. Tail, moderately thick, not high set. It reaches at least the hook joint and may have a hook or semicircle on the end. The last two, three tail vertebra often form a joint bone. I would say they are fused. The tail is carried down when the dog is at rest, pendulous in repose, when alert and in movement carried not higher than the top line and is slightly curved upwards, but never curled or tilted over the back. General appearance. 
four quarters. Muscular and straight when seen from the front, parallel and set moderately wide apart. Um, shoulder and upper arm. Shoulder blades and upper arms are long, obliquely set and approximately of equal length form a shoulder blade angle of 90 degrees. Forearm straight, oval in the cross section, set vertically. Oval in the cross section. This is one more sign of influence of the side hound because the bones of the limbs are somewhat flattened. A forearm straight over in the cross section set, uh, set vertically. Elbows pointed backwards. Uh, carpal joint raised, strong and dry. Uh, Pastern strong, moderately long, and slightly inclined when viewed from the side. Four feet oval shaped, firm and well knit. Any color of pads and nails uh, is allowed. Hindquarters. General appears. Muscular, straight, parallel when seen from the behind. Uh, and uh, set slightly wider than the four quarters. This is one more sign of side hound influence. The hind legs should not be placed far behind the body. Look, if I lower this vertical line from the buttock, this is inside and the plus muscles, it should be right here. It should be quite close to the rear pastern. So the hind legs are placed behind, but not too much. Uh, upper thigh, long, wide, well muscled. Lower thigh, long, uh, its length is approximately equal to the length of the upper thigh oblique. Stifle, the stifle is well bent. Try to remember the whole, uh, the old description. When it was mentioned that the stifles are not too much bent. This is the result of modern cultivation, which improved the knee angulations because of more long upper thigh. Upper thigh became longer compared to the previous dogs, dogs of the past. Hawks, well angulated, lean, flat, and wide. Wide because of the, the development of the heel bone. Uh, Ray Paston, strong, lean, uh, moderately long, set slightly under the body. Sometimes, yes, but not necessarily. They could be vertical, by, uh, and they could be a little bit slanted, slanted forward. Um, set slightly under the body. Um, this is not the best definition, um, because hind legs should be placed somewhat behind the dog. And at the same time, they couldn't be placed under the body. It is a, a technical fault, and it should be better to describe as the rear pastels could be slightly slanted forward, like for Berzwey. 
or like for dark zones. Without due clause, unless the removal is prohibited in specific countries. Do you remember that in the all the description of this breed in the Mazover book, it was mentioned that sometimes very rare the new clothes uh, are appearing. But in the modern time, usually we don't see this new clothes. At least in my life, I couldn't see the new clothes in the South Russian shepherd dog. But because of this past, because of this, um, another forerunners of the breed, uh, they can appear. And in this case, they could not be removed if it is prohibited by the law of the country. This is the sense which is, uh, which, which should be correctly interpreted regarding the standard requirement. I read the text and uh, we'll uh, describe the picture one more time. Uh, free and balanced. The typical gait is the easy and well extended with a good reach in the four quarters and a good drive from the hind legs. At the trot, the forelegs move in a straight line with a tendency of slight convergence to the longitudinal axis of the body. Uh, the head lowers to the level of the top line. Um, in movements, the rump is at time at this is at the same level with the withers or slightly higher. The joints of limbs freely bend and unbend when in motion. It is a very good example of the German, uh, sorry, of the South Russian uh, shepherd dog on the boom, on the trot. Uh, with a very typical top line rising uh, through the uh, somewhat uh, arched loin to the iliac tuber, then this point is becoming higher than the withers. Typical top line. Uh, the limbs provide excellent span. Extension is very well defined here. The front legs is moved forward, uh, being close to the moment of landing, so that the eye and paw of, the, of this foreleg belong to one vertical line. The high, the legs from the opposite side are converging to the base of the vertical line, lowered from the um, point of intersection, and provide the best support of the body at this stage. The span or swing of the limbs is in cribs in cribes in the uh, 90 degrees boundaries angle. And uh, the green line connecting elbow and knee joint is horizontal. Another green line, the upper one, connecting the humeral scapular joint and hip uh, deviates somewhat from the horizontal position, about five degrees, and is the reason why the ramp is becoming higher than the width. There are criteria which should be taken in account when we are uh, evaluating this dog on the move. Please remember this picture. In reality, you have this picture. 
So, if you know exactly, if you remember what I was saying, you can see first how it works in the front, how it is constructed, how it is changed in the rear, and then you have to uh, remember all the lines I used for the explanation of all criterions uh, which provide that balanced movement. I forgot to tell you, but this is the same picture, this, that the movement is well balanced because of the equal strides, front and <laughs> rear. And this is this uh, equality is provided by this right angle defining boundaries of this swing of this span span okay go on skin taut supple without any folds and sagas any pigmentation of the skin is allowed except for the nose eye and the lip rims, which must be pigmented black. Uh, eye and lip rims. So, eye rims and lip rims. This is the correct understanding of this demand. Coat. Hair abundant. The coat on the head, body, limbs and tails is of Almost the same length. Thick and long coat on the head forms eyebrows. Uh, it, uh, as I told you already, this is a young bitch. That's why coat is not so profuse. But it doesn't matter when we read in the standard. Uh, thick and long coat on the head forms eyebrows, moustache and beard. Visible. Uh, the nasal bridge shall be also well covered with the hair. It is desirable for males to have a mane. Uh, we will see a little bit later a picture of the mane. The quality of the coat, long, no less than 10 centimeters, harsh, thick, coarse and shaggy, slightly wavy or broken. Uh, the outer coat of the head and limbs is thinner and less coarse. The undercoat is soft, long, thick and uh, lighter colored. The coat with the completely combat undercoat or matted either elf lock is undesirable. Color. <coughs> White, white with yellow shading, white with gray, wheaten biscuit, or pale ivory patches, gray, pale ivory, gray and pale ivory dogs may have a white blaze on the head and the muzzle, and as well as white markings on the neck. With a spotted color, the patches should be of shades and uh, should not have distinct borders. They should be uh, slightly watched, uh, washed out. Um, with the, so I read it already. The final coat color appears by the age of 18 to 40, 24 months and due to these puppies and the young dogs have, have somewhat more intense color. Height at with us, 65 at least for males, 62 at least for the females. Larger size is uh, preferable. In general confirmation, it will be, if its general confirmation is well proportioned. Weight, Three, uh, 35 kilos at least for males, 
and 34 females. Now, about the folds. The height at widths less than 66 centimeters for the males and less than 62 centimeters for female. Neither sufficient nor excessive long body. Masculine bitches. A seasonal lightening of pigment of the nose. Partial, no, not more than 10%, eyelids depigmentation. Excessive or insufficient curve of the top line of the loin. Insufficiently developed forechest. Insufficiently angulation of the forequarters and hindquarters. Insufficient balance in movement. Severe faults. The height at width is less than 64 for males and um, 59 for females. Light, coarse or loose constitution, short legs. Feminine males. The width is noticeably higher than the croup. High set neck, yellow bird eyes. Loose flus and or eyelids. eyelids. Partially unpigmented eyelids, small teeth, large diastemas between the teeth. The incisors are not set in one line. The absence of two or more PM1, M3 is not taken into consideration. The ears hanging on the cartilage, narrow, shallow chest, roach back. Short, horizontal, or abruptly sloping croup. croup. The tail directed from the root towards the head and resting on the back and or the tail curled over the back. The tail motion, motionlessly hanging down. Strident angulation in front or and rear. Over angulation in the rear. Sparse hair on the nasal bridge, short and or sparse furnishing, coat on the muzzle, poor moustache and beard. Uh, uh, sorry, beard. Absence of the undercoat, straight soft top coat, silky coat parting on the back. Intense spotting, incompletely matured coat color after the age of two years. Disqualifying faults. Aggressive or overly shy. Any dogs clearly showing physical or behavior abnormalities. Any surgical or cosmetic changes. <coughs> Lack of desirable breed type. Square bill, rounded skull. Blue, green, bleached, whitish eyes on the eyes of the eyes of different color, the entropium. All the deviations from the normal scissor bite, the absence of any tooth except for PM1 and M3, short hair, tight curls or cords on any parts of the body, the coat lying close to the head. Um, or limbs, black, red, grayish, brown, blue, brown or tricolor, intensely represented mask, mask or saddle, totally unpigmented eyelids, pink or spotted nose, pink lips, naturally short bobtail or straight docked tail, side gating, pacing. And as usually, not a bene, about testicles and about the um, functionally and clinically healthy features. This is the standard. So, before to watch the pictures I prepared, let us repeat uh, the most important features of the South Russian Shepherd Confirmation. So, it's a rather big dog. From medium, 
from over medium to big size. Strong, but not coarse. Moderately long body. With a very specific top line where withers are not marked and uh, uh, there is a slight curve or slight arc of the loin and uh, the rump or sacrum is not uh, lower than the withers at the same level or even higher especially when dog is moving dog should not look cobby it's rather high leg dog and it should be checked by your hands head is of the normal length about 40 percent like for majority of the dogs excellent angulation in front and in the rear dog is easy moving coat is rough coarse shaggy slightly wavy or broken the colors are also mentioned and especially important when you examine this breed is to check pigmentation of the nose eyes eye rims and lips it must be black and uh, only seasonal lightening for the light color dogs is permitted but anyway the uh, nose rim should be black this is the overall picture you have to keep in your mind about the temperament this dog when they are in the show must be trained to accept the judge and uh, the judge's examination and this requires the special uh, training before the show that's it now let us watch the pictures you can see the male as i told you already it's a little bit shorter in body than the female uh, somewhat long bodied strong with the correct depth of the body you can see where the elbow ulna is located this is the point and this is the point of the uh, this is the level of the uh, elbow joint this this is the level of the elbow ulna uh, rather long head like it it is required by the standard medium long neck uh, top line is slightly arched over the loin uh, correct front angulation moderately angulated behind and a well coated dog i have to mention that this is the working dog not only show dog it works uh, in the mecoms and protects uh, its property that's why coat is uh, uh, rather long and correct of texture i know this dog but not so profuse as it could be because of its working functions so let us look at this dog first long body let me remind you that i do not evaluate the dogs i evaluate the pictures and the dogs could be pictured from different angles like this dog was pictured from above and it shortens its vertical proportions because of the this wrong angle of picturing the dog looks 
looks short-legged. So, long-bodied with a great depth of the body, large uh, head, medium long, uh, long neck, uh, too much pronounced with us, slightly arched over the loin, a bit straight in front. Look, this is the shoulder blade and this is the upper arm. I do not criticize the foreleg length because of the wrong angle of the photographer. Um, coat is quite okay. Long bodied, a bit short legged, with a large head, rather long neck, straight top line, almost straight, just a little uh, arched of the loin. Correct front angulation, a bit too short for legs correct rear angulations and the uh, coat could be developed better. It is shaggy coat, slightly uh, wavy and uh, it seems to be slightly broken. Black nose, black lips, long bodied, uh, dark well proportioned. Don't be mistaken looking at the depth of the body because of the coat. Look, this is the elbow level and this is the ulna level. So the vertical proportion is correct. The dog looks a little bit short legged but only because of the coat. Long bodied with the excellent typical top line. Um, head is large with the excellent pigmentation of nose and lips. Um, I told you already about the front angulation, excellent angulated behi behind, well coated. This one, long bodied, a bit too short legged, head could be larger as well, neck could be longer. A little bit straight top line from the withers to the uh, rump and the croup is uh, sloping. Enough angulated in front, elbow should be under the withers and this is in front of this vertical line. Correct rear angulations. A well coated dog of correct color. Uh, look at this dog on the move. Uh, top line is a little bit too straight, but anyway, the rump and with us are on the same level. And uh, this is the beach. And of course, top line, uh, like in case of Borzoi, is a little bit um, straighter than by the males. So it's acceptable. Important thing is the level of the iliac bone and with us. And level is the same. Uh, good depth of the body. Body is solid. Uh, you can see extended trot and this limbs front and the rear create the right angle, how it should be. The opposite limbs are converging to the base of the vertical line where the center of gravity is located. And the front leg, uh, close to the moment of landing, is under the eye. Dog is well coated and I believe this is the same beach what we uh, saw already here because of the male, before the male. So and let's go on. One more photo with her and I think it's all. Uh -huh. And the same beach where we can see the limbs 
uh, in the spam. And the uh, limbs from the opposite side are also at the right position. Everything what I was saying uh, about the previous picture, I could repeat here exactly the same. I didn't want to show you dogs with the bad constructions because the breed is not so um, widespread and only slight deviations were demonstrated here at the screen. It is very important that you have had a correct idea about this breed, which is quite not easy. And one more time, you don't have to have a delusion looking on the profusely coated dog because inside it could be absolutely different and the final decision as you are a judge should be based on both view with your eyes and with your hands that's it uh, uh, should you have any questions, I would be glad to to give the answers. No, it doesn't seem that anybody has the questions. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, I'm uh, quite curious if uh, many countries are here represented. Mm, don't know. Okay, we can check later. Yeah. Mexico, Italy, South Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mexico, yeah. So we almost cover the whole globe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see. I see. Thank you very much for your hi. So, uh, I believe that uh, this lecture uh, will be, or is, useful for you to understand what is the idea has this very interesting breed. So, mm -hmm. should you have uh, no questions, I would like to thank you for your attention, uh, for your passion, for your interest in our native breeds, in this case in uh, South Russian Sheepdog. And uh, see you next time, uh, when uh, I will be going to tell you about the uh, Yakutian uh, like uh, and uh, West Siberian. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Now I will start from the Russian uh, European like and uh, West Siberian like. Mm -hmm. And next pair will be uh, for the next webinar. So next time, Russian European and West Siberian like us all together during one seminar. Then, next couple uh, I have already told you about, and the last one will be Samoyed at the end of the year. And uh, it will be the whole um, cycle of the native breeds, including 10 breeds recognized by the FCI. So, okay, see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.